Bryson Price here. Bryson Price. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make hyper pop. This is what it sounds like. So I'm gonna change the pitch on this second one here. Let me go into the controls, go into pitch envelope, and turn that pitch up. I love using this technique to allow sounds to punch through the mix better. Sometimes I feel like if you just take one sound and move it slightly off the grid so they're not hitting at the exact same time, it just really helps bring more punch and clarity to the mix. Then I'm going to put a transient shaper on that snare because I feel like I want it to punch a little bit harder. Turn the sustain down. I'm going to put a pitch envelope on this also. And then I can bring this in a little bit. I'm going to take an EQ here, cut out some of those highs and that stomp. And then also, um, I'm going to put this off the grid. Yeah, it sounds pretty nice together. I'm going to move it off the grid just a little bit more. Now that we have a solid kick and snare groove going, let's add some percussion and hi-hats. Let me cut out the lows on that. Put this in here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Put that hi-hat off like that. I didn't even mean to do that, but I like the way that sounds. See what that fill would sound like maybe at the end. Yeah, I like that. Maybe this sound. Now that I've added the kick, the snare, the percussion, the hi-hats, I'm going to add one of the main synth sounds in the beat. <laughs> That's fresh, I like that. The way I came up with this sound is I followed a tutorial on YouTube from a guy named Rocket Powered Sound. Here's a clip of it. Later, I tweaked the sound and I saved it into a custom preset folder. And then I brought it into this project and I vocoded it and it was being triggered by a super saw. This next part is a drum breakdown that I made before the stream started. And what I'm gonna do here is add in sub bass. Oh, I like that. That's cool. These hi-hats, I'm matching them up with the drum pattern. 
I used an interesting technique in this one to come up with the chords for the song. What I did was I drew in the notes of the scale I was working in, and then on the Ableton MIDI clip, I hit the fold button. So that allows me to only draw in notes within this scale, and it doesn't let me get outside of that. Usually I like to play my chords, but I found that doing this method allows me to come up with some interesting results. I'm gonna quantize it start to end instead of it just playing a D sharp the whole time let's have it playing the root notes <laughs> And then I may be able to even automate the some of the formats and stuff on here. Yeah, that, that's a pretty cool automation. Automating that format down like that. This next part was interesting. One of the people in the chat, his name is Kingdom Squad. He told me to use glitchy effects and stutters, stuff like that. So I took beat repeat and let me show you what I did with it. for like a certain effect in the middle of the song or something. I haven't really been able to find a decent pitch down plugin that's for a good price that I can use with Ableton. If you have any suggestions, put them in the comments, but what I use is Little Alter Boy, so let me show you how I use that. I always like to put limiters after my filter automations because I feel like it catches some of that clipping that can occur when you're moving the frequencies around. some of those harsh frequencies and also it'll help turn the sound down a little bit. I love what I did on this next part. I automated a filter opening up to get a crescendo effect. At this point, I've added pretty much all the main elements of this song. I've got the kick, the snare, percussion, hi-hat, sub-bass, synth, all that. But on this part, I felt like the beat was lacking a little bit, so I wanted to stack another hi-hat on top, and I added some pretty crazy effects to match the hyper-pop feel, so check out what I did. What do y'all think about those colors? <laughs> And 
and this beat is finished for right now until I get some vocals on it. So let me play it for you from start to finish. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you liked it, make sure you check out some of my 60 second beat making videos as well as my 4 minute beat making videos. And I've got tons of new music coming for you guys. I live stream at least once per week, 2-3 to three hour music production sessions and I'll be posting more videos like this also in the future. So if that sounds good to you, go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell button so you don't miss a video and I'll catch y'all next time.